so hello students now let us see the second part of evolution that is theories of evolution and mechanism of evolution we got now convinced that evolution has taken place when life originated etc now let us see how evolution has taken place but different people try to explain in a different way so first uh, scientific theory and evolution was given by lama jean baptiste de lamarck he has written a book called philosophy zoologic and uh, there are three basic things effect of environment use and disuse theory inheritance of acquired characters but uh, what is the most criticized part is inheritance of acquired characters there are certain supporters of lamarck theory also they are called neo lamarckist then most scientific theory and evolution was given by darwin so darwin was strongly influenced by certain people like malthus malthus was uh, writing on population population growth is faster than the food increase so always there is a competition then there is a geologist called lyell he also influenced and darwin traveled in a ship known as hms beagle he visited extensively various places and in particular galapagos islands so that is the place that attracted darwin many birds uh, he observed all those birds they are popularly known as darwin finches because attention given by him and darwin theory can be divided into uh, main a concept of darwin theory you can take like this right first one constancy in the population every population try to multiply enormously but it remains constant second concept is overproduction enormous large number of gametes are produced all gametes are produced are not fertilized so all fertilized will not develop like that various examples were quoted then third important thing is variations and there are actually two types of variations continuous and discontinuous variations in every generations what appear are known as continuous variations suddenly what appear in one generation are called discontinuous that is mutation but unfortunately darwin gave importance to continuous variations and cumulative effect of these fluctuating or continuous variations lead to origin of new species so ikkada darwin the mistake anamata main mistake then <coughs> coming to survival of the fittest this phrase was first coined by herbert spencer but uh, survival of fittest means it can be also taken as a natural selection so what is uh, meant by natural selection in a competition the one which survives better is said to be selected by nature what does it mean you can also call this phenomenon as differential reproductive success so competition lo oka variety kanna inko variety ekko successful ga survive aithe then we can call it as natural selection so that is giving lot of importance to this then after this survival of fittest uh, you know uh, origin of species right in this actually there is one more concept called uh, so constancy over production then struggle for existence struggle for existence then universal occurrence of variations next survival of fittest right then after this origin of species the struggle intra specific inter specific struggle with the physical forces like this different types suddenly there will be natural calamities right 
like sudden outburst of viral diseases and all these things uh, they are uh, unforeseen changes and what uh, survives in this you can say that is struggle with physical forces then what is able to survive in this struggle those uh, with uh, useful variations are surviving how can you say how can you say that it is fit variation the organisms with favorable variations or fit variations survive better they have more progeny so that's why it is called darwinian fitness then final concept is origin of species but uh, two key concept in darwin's theory what are they that is natural selection and branching descent natural selection and branching descent we have to understand the darwin concept in the context of uh, its life cycle speed a bacterium which is having a short life span very quickly passes on the changes to next generation and some organisms long life span require such a changes to occur in many years hundreds of thousands or millions of years now there are many factors now anthropogenic factors for evolution man made fa factors that are uh, uh, changing suppose you are using pesticide they develop resistance then another pesticide like like uh, antibiotics used against bacteria antibiotic resistance develops by bacteria so lederberg and other did a lot of work on this now what proved uh, natural selection is uh industrial melanism which was observed in biston bichularia in a moth by name biston bichularia so there is a moth uh, called biston bichularia which used to be light colored matching with the background when lot of lichens were growing on the bark of trees and the lot of uh, pollution nowadays uh, because of uh, over greedy ambitions of human beings uh, changing a lot of uh, composition and different organisms are getting uh, badly affected now when these changes are happening what is happening so the lichens you know lichens are popularly known as bio indicators of air pollution or sulfur dioxide they are not growing in when lichens are absent the background is becoming black and such a black background black colored or dark colored forms uh, pepper moths or biston which are uh, surviving better so it is providing direct evidence for natural selection so like this various people worked on natural selection but <clears throat> there is another theory called germ plasm theory so germ plasm theory so germ plasm theory was given by wiesman august wiesman so it was given by august wiesman right germ plasm theory then mutation theory so what is the germ plasm theory any changes which are acquired in somatic cells will not be passed on to next generation only those that changes occur in gonads will be passed on to next generation and coming to mutation theory uh, hugo devries who worked uh, on a plant called enothera uh, lamarckiana enothera lamarckiana so <coughs> Enothera lamarckiana is a evening primrose plant on which he did a lot of work. Sudden heritable changes uh, are known as mutations, macro variations. So Devries believed uh, that there is no direction in evolution, but Darwin's theory believes in uh, a direction. Now modern concept means uh, trying to put uh, a combination of these two. so a combination of these two means <clears throat> so if you take uh, devries concept uh, evolution resulted due to mutation 
and Darwin's theory evolution results from variations and De Vries evolution is sudden and Darwin's theory evolution is gradual and mutations are random and directionless so just now I told you suddenly of a direction like a direction on the jury the evolution that is on the brain stochastic process under evolution they cannot understand totally in which way it can occur we can't predict it so variations are small and directional according to Darwin so from this what you can understand is we cannot say that only in this way it can occur evolution can occur in any direction right now so this modern concept was uh, explained uh, by various people and one small point let us see <coughs> so this is biological history of evolution if you take you know reptiles were living reptiles are including uh, chelonia crocodilia Squamata, which includes reptiles, uh, uh, lizards, and snakes, and so Chelonia, Crocodilia, Rhynchocephalia, Squamata. So turtles. So turtles means that is nothing but Chelonia, and uh, they have originated from earliest reptiles. What are earliest reptiles? Cotylosaurs then they gave rise to this group what is this group squamata so squamata includes lizards and snakes then from this base there is another group called tartarus tartarus means what is tartara spinoda spinoda is a living fossil living in new zealand rhynchocephaly is the name of group so rhynchocephalia rhynchocephalia includes this now this is uh, tata right that means tataras are closely linked with squamata this point you have to understand which are choose jartha arbhan jaspondi edi deen ke related lizards and snakes uh, they belong to one group squamata then you see this here tartaras uh, tartaras and squamata arising from a common branch next you observe another thing so thicodont uh, extinct reptiles which had uh, extinct reptiles which had uh, thicodont teeth from this reptile what originated crocodiles have originated and dinosaurs originated from the base of this line even birds have originated so birds crocodiles dinosaurs from thicodonts which formed another line so this entire thing including turtles you can call it sauropsidans generally birds and reptiles are called sauropsids then coming to synapsids there are other reptiles called synapsids in this earlier organisms were pelicosaurs from this pelicosaurs originated uh, thiriapsid reptile. Synapsida includes an order called thiriapsids with example like uh, <coughs> so it has example like cyanognathus. So cyanognathus and that gave rise to mammals. So this is one of the brief history. They used to live uh, fish like reptiles and fish like reptiles are called ichthyosaurus saurus means reptiles ichthyo <coughs> ichthyo means fish now <coughs> this is another chart uh, showing this crocodiles sorry reptiles how these groups uh, originated you try to remember one small uh, observe one important uh, thing this tyrannosaurus and brachiosaurus they form one line in origin whereas uh, triceratops and stegosaurus triceratops and stegosaurus another line so from this thicodont ancestors crocodiles archaeopteryx then 
Stegosaurus and Triceratops, then Brachiosaurus and Tyrannosaurus, like this, different forms have originated. So, that is uh, the various things uh, happening. And coming to another modern concept uh, now put forward is Hardy Weinberg. This Hardy Weinberg uh, is a hypothetical situation, it is applicable. This theory or principle is applicable only if it is a large population. So, Hardy Weinberg is applicable only if it is a large population. So, the conditions are the population should be large and a random mating population. Random mating population then random meeting population then no changes no changes due to mutations no changes due to mutations uh, natural selection no changes due to mutation natural selection like this but uh, no migration, no large scale migration, no large scale migration. These are all the conditions. So, if all these things are fulfilled, then what is said? <coughs> Population remains constant from generation to generation in equilibrium. Allelic frequencies remain constant. Here, there are two formulas you see P plus Q is equal to 1 that is related to allelic frequency. P means dominant allelic frequency. So, let us say there is a, a capital T small t. Capital T is dominant, small t is recessive. So, P refers to dominant, Q refers to recessive. Similarly, in diploid organism, there will be homozygous or heterozygous. So, for genotypic frequencies, what is the formula applicable? P square plus 2PQ plus Q square is equal to 1. So, first formula is related to allelic frequency, second is related to genotypic. P square means homozygous dominant, 2PQ means heterozygous dominant, Q square means homozygous recessive. But this Hardy Weinberg conditions can be changed. Hardy Weinberg principle is followed means there is no evolution. But what can cause evolution? Most important factor is natural selection, then mutation, genetic drift, genetic recombination, gene flow. These are the factors that are in. So, uh, we will see natural selection point separately. Sudden random changes are called mutation without natural selection, it cannot help. Random changes in small populations are called genetic drift, small problem because hardy Weinberg applicable in large population. It is of two types, founder effect and bottleneck effect. Because some founders have this character, that character is inherited. So, initially someone <coughs> with a defect uh, is entering and uh, because the founder having that character, all descendants have that character. Bottleneck means the natural calamities. Right, because of natural calamities also sometimes. So, rarely genetic recombinations will also cause changes. Right. So, mutations, genetic drift, right. mutations, genetic drift, natural selection, genetic recombinations, gene flow, migration, you can also call gene migration, movement from one place to another. So, uh, genetic load also try to remember. When a defect uh, is present in a population in a heterozygous part condition, it cannot be eliminated easily. So, it is genetic load. These are factors that causes changes in evolution. <coughs> right. Now, so you see this point now. So, when population is initially present, 
so this is the initial condition it can go in this direction in this direction or in this direction <coughs> so first one is showing uh, the stabilizing or normalizing selection so stabilizing or normalizing selection this is directional selection and this one is disruptive selection so stabilizing selection so stabilizes the population uh, becomes uh, population gets stabilized more and more average forms are selected peak becomes more higher and narrow means both sides members here also eliminated here also eliminated. only average is selected so that is if you observe sometimes average height uh, average weight in many britain and other areas they made studies in childbirth putting on a pillow weight equa takwa average weight mood on the one average weight no like to select out the mother about the stabilizing so stabilizing selection generally not promote that much changes second one directional you observe in the evolution of giraffe initially their ancestors were having short neck in fact uh, lamarck also stress example he gave giraffe constant use and disuse he believed because of use only talent but it is a different story but here initially short neck and long neck middle all three were present nature continuously selected long neck varieties so very long neck varieties formed now like that you can say biston bichel area mostly nowadays dark colored forms are selected now when single population splits into two or more then it is called disruptive selection adapt to radiation you can say this is one of the best example and last point uh, in evolution so like this uh, through time what happened what causes evolution means all these factors dinosaurs were very successful at one time they became extinct and about 65 million years ago they became dinosaurs became extinct gigantic form tyrannosaurus rex was living around 200 million years ago ichthyosaurus was living and uh, uh, latimeria chalumni in 1938 that was uh, a living fossil now it was like a first fish uh, which had tried to move on land and water from that amphibians have originated probably like this first land organisms were plants and later on <coughs> like uh, you go through those years eh? 300 years 350 320 500 like this several things first uh, land organism sea beetles when they are present like first uh, jarred fishes among uh, jarred vertebrates first forms were fishes so will end with the uh, human evolution right human beings belong to human beings belong to an order called a primata so primata is the order and uh, human beings belong to family super family hominoidea and uh, family hominidae so there is tremendous uh, uh, success initially shrew like forms were there very small rat like forms used to live and uh, from this what happened is among uh, if you can uh, observe the evolution of uh, man in particular <coughs> we can say first uh, there is there was a common ancestor like dryopithecus or proconsul about 15 million years ago and uh, this uh, dryopithecus Dryopithecus gave rise to Dryopithecus was more ape-like. From that, somewhat human-like, uh, Ramapithecus forms originated. This, uh, from this, Australopithecus, 
Australopithecus africanus is uh, another term commonly used. So this Australopithecus, many anthropologists uh, consider as a transitional stage between human beings and apes actually. And uh, in fact, uh, Australopithecus was also <coughs> first to become erect. From this Homo habilis, Homo habilis is commonly called tool maker, efficient user of tools, but still vegetarian. Then Homo erectus, totally he became erect, then cranial capacity slowly increased. Homo habilis was about 650 to 800 cc, it became 900 cc from that Neanderthal man, then modern man. And there is a side branch here, or you can say, uh, after uh, uh, Homo uh, Neanderthalensis, Homo Neanderthalensis was believer of religion probably. He was believer of religion. And uh, he uh, buried a dead person, so we say he is the believer of religion, right. Then uh, there used to be a cave painter called uh, Cro Magnan Man. Cro Magnan Man. So that is the evolution. You can see this uh, the 46 chromosomes are present in human beings, and progressively there is increase in intelligence, language skills are developed. Uh, so that uh, agriculture and other things also developed uh, and all years and other things uh, you once uh, carefully follow the book. <laughs>